What up brothers, it's Clipper King returning for a brand new review for my channel. As you can see the figure in front of you is the Hot Toys Barney Ross from Expendables 2. Or second version of Barney Ross basically. This figure has been supplied to me by Lee Wood at The Good, The Bad and The Robots. Great guy, we all know him. Community members, especially through Facebook. Top, top seller. Uh, much respect to him. I will start off by saying if you put a quick pause in this review and nip across to his site he has got this figure still available uh, I think he's got a few left I'm not sure stock wise how many but uh, like I say if you want to pick one up and you've been waiting for this review to say whether to uh, buy or not I would just uh, go across have a look at his site and like I say the figure we're shipping is a really reasonable price I will say I've bought this one and my intention was always to buy it to sell it straight away because I'd sold me version 1 and I thought, when I get the second one, which I had pre-ordered, I thought, I'll also just review that and I'll sell it as well. At the end of review, I'll just say, anybody wants it, make me offers. That could change, uh, but I'll make my thoughts on the figure clearer as time goes on. So start off by having a look up and down the figure. See the new head sculpt with the uh, new facial hair design. I'll make my thoughts on the uh, likeness soon. Same with the outfit, I'll score up all the categories like I normally do and you'll get me uh, you get me opinion. I will say as well, I was reading my comments earlier today and I got a comment on the Hulk video, I think. Go across and have a look, I'm not sure. Somebody says they ought to change my name from Clipper King to the Nitpick King and I thought to myself, does he really, really believe that I'm nitpicking? Or did he want me to go through that Hulk review and just say, I basically said the Hulk were a fucking awesome figure anyway. But I don't know if people don't fully listen or what it is. Um, the points I made, I think, on Oak were valid. I do think the sight of the articulation joints is a bit unsightly. And I do think his lack of articulation hurts the figure a little bit. But all in all, I pretty much said it were an awesome figure. So, I don't know. I don't know if nitpicking is being confused with honesty. Because if people want me to review a figure and say, oh... Yeah, his head sculpt looks slightly like him, that's a 5. Yeah, his outfit's all right, and it fucks up his articulation, but I'll get a 5. And, yeah, his accessories, he's got one gun, but I'll get that a 5 as well. If that's what you want to sort of back up the fact that you've chosen a certain figure, then you're not going to find it on this channel. You're going to have to go, I don't know, go to Sean Long, who's going to tell you everything in his collection, the best thing since fucking sliced bread, because I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be honest, because I don't want somebody picking a figure up around £150 and... Thinking to yourself, fucking hold on a minute, Clipper said this what perfect figure, and it's not at all. There's a problem with this and this, and I can't get it in this pose, and blah blah blah. If that's what you're looking for, like I said, go elsewhere because you're only going to get honesty here. So I'll just clear that up, and I can't remember who even left that comment, so I can't uh, can't shout the lad out. So we'll get this turning, and I'll do the source material. Just get a rotating right nice. You're pretty, like I say, just a straight up and down pose. I've not even put his revolver in bike. That's unprofessional of me, that. And so just got him maybe walking forward. His guns are pretty standard for the uh, opening of the video. So, source material. I will say I quite enjoyed this film and I quite enjoyed the first Expendables film. I think they were just... I think what they are is sort of tongue-in-cheek throwback to the 80s action films. And obviously that's backed up by the fact of the the cast that they use, the sort of, let's throw all these so-called icons into one movie, give them limited amount of lines and, I don't know, a fucking see-through plot and let's just let's just go retro sort of thing. I think if people go to watch the movies with that in mind, then they're pretty much going to enjoy them. And I will say, our Callum actually loves both films, whereas a film like Batman, he really doesn't like. He's, he's not into it at all. He says it's boring as shit. And I suppose that's an age thing, but... Like I say, if you look at this as a just a straight-up action film, then there is a lot to like about it. I think the casting, although you sit back and you look at some of the acting, you look at Chuck Norris and you look at Arnie in place, you think, oh, fucking hell, wooden as fuck. But, like I say, it's a tongue-in-cheek and it's sort of, let's throw some fucking taglines in and let's just fucking blow shit up. And if you view it like that, then you're not going to go far wrong. And to be honest as well, I think they came along at a good time because I think everything had got very serious, very born identity, very matrix, and this was just a sort of why have we got to why have we got to go all out every film? Why has every film got to be a massive blockbuster? Why has it all got to be special effects? Let's go back to using stuntmen and explosions 
and let's have some fucking 80s action films and I think that's what these films have done more so than a lot of others. So I did enjoy it, although it's never going to be a classic. Uh, I think I slightly um, like it more than the first one, although I've probably watched the first one more. Um, but I'm just going to give it a straight down middle, a 3 out of 5. Like I say, it's no way a classic, but it is enjoyable. So yeah, and I think Barney Ross is pretty much these Expendables films. Sylvester Stallone could have played it safe and gone, right, this is Rambo Part 5 and this is Rambo Part 6 and Part 7 and just basically dressed slightly differently, got with a gang of mercenaries and they could have been First Blood films. Now, I'm personally glad they didn't do that because I love the First Blood franchise and I'm glad they didn't tail it off and weaken it sort of by by making it sort of tongue-in-cheek or a joke sort of film. I do like the way the First Blood films went and like I said... Sylvester Stallone, to his credit, I think, has come up with a new franchise. He can run this bitch on as long as he wants to run it on. He can make five of Expendables films, keep bringing in new cast. It'll work, I think. Um, but, yeah, that's that's my thoughts on it. Um, I've given it a three out of five. Let us roll on. On to packaging, and this is high speed category. Here we go. Right, it's a basic slip cover. As you can see, the artwork's really nice, or so I think. You've got a sort of a real life shot there of Barney Ross from this film. They hadn't sort of used a, a version or an image from the first film. All the graying area is raised and really coarse, as you can hear, and then here is really smooth on the uh, number two. Really like it, to be honest. I would normally give a slip cover a three out of five, as you know, because I think the straight down line. Image shot on the back, pose up quite nice. Again, that's all raised. Really, really good card. Uh, sort of feels like the Chris Taylor platoon box, and I respect that. Uh, anybody who knows me, like I said, will know that a slip cover, I would give a three out of five. But I also take into account artwork and material the views really good material i really like the artwork so i've bumped it up to a four out of five rolling on to facial likeness now this were a, a bit of a downer category before i received the uh, figure because i'd seen the pictures and i thought they'd gone all wrong around the mouth around the jaw area i received it and i will say it's better in hand than the pictures look uh, but I will also say I really, really like the head sculpt on the first version. I thought they got him bang on for the time. In fact, no, tell a lie. I think what they'd done is they'd been very flattering to him for the time. I think they'd gone younger looking. Uh, and like I say, I don't think they'd picked up any of his imperfections that he has now. Now, bearing in mind Sylvester Stallone's in his 60s, I think he looks fucking awesome for his age, if I'm honest. But then again, his face is showing signs of a lot of plastic surgery and Botox and unnatural lines, if that makes sense to you. Now, what this figure's done is caught his likeness fucking awesome. As he, as he stands today and in the film, the likeness is bang on, I think. Uh, probably more so than the first version. But saying that, the expression is not to my taste because when I look at it, I see it with my eyes and my ears are hearing this. Boom. And that is basically him having a shit because that is the that is the fucking expression that I think he's got. He looks like he's pushing out a really hard turd, which which I don't know if it's ever been said about a figure before. I might be the first to have Callum stop laughing, you prick. It might be the first time it's ever been used as an expression for a facial likeness. But to be honest, that is what it looks like to me. I don't know if it's to do with the sort of what we refer to around here as jaw jut, which means it's like a really pronounced jawbone, or if it's the shape of the mouth, or even if it's the shape of the tash, the sort of handlebar tash, just to me looks like he's pushing a shit out. I can't describe it any other way. But... It, it don't kill the likeness, and I think Optoys have done a stunning job. I think the paint applications... In fact, let me turn the light off. So now you're getting it in real light with just the camera. The paint applications are 
amazing. The tones and everything, the wrinkles. If I put the arms down, in fact. It's getting nice and close. The wrinkles or the stretch marks or whatever around the eyebrows, under the eye. Like I said, I think they've caught him as is today. So like I say, it is a really, really accurate sculpt, but expression, not to my taste. I think that's the best way I can say it. And a lot of people knew I were getting this and they've said, which version would you get? I've got a chance of picking up either. Which would you get? If I'm honest, and I'm going to say it now before I give the score, I would pick this version up. But that's not to say that I prefer this head sculpt because if I were really, really pushed, I would still probably pick the first head sculpt. But this looks newer, more technically done, probably more accurate. Um, but I, like I said, a matter of taste, I would still go for the first version of head sculpt. Although everything else has been moved on a notch to make this a better all round figure. I hope that makes sense. Another thing I'll say as well before I move away from likeness is. I don't know if you're getting this through camera, but when I look into his eyes, it appears very wall-eyed to me. And people don't know what that means is. It's sort of the opposite to cock-eyed. So his eyes don't face each other. They sort of look away from each other like a lizard's wood sort of thing. I don't know if it's a mispaint or if that's one of the things that makes it accurate looking. It just looks a tiny, tiny bit. His left eye, I think, is out to its left a little bit too much but uh, see also and no. all if you dip his head dip his head forward a bit if you notice that as much I don't know like I said I think I hope I've explained my thoughts on it sort of adequately I'm not kill I'm not fucking pissing on any of the uh, on any of the likeness because I think they're both bang on you'd never mistake who it was supposed to be but there's just something about this that like I say just not the expression, not the expression I like. But I'm still giving it a four out of five. And I will just say as well, I never really covered the poles while I got it like that. I started off pretty much hands up in the air, uh, straightforward with the guns together. And all I've done there is basically push his arms down to get a likeness of his face and dipped his head forward. And I think he's moved into a rather natural pose as if he's sort of, Especially with his foot like that, which it always were like that, in his guns. It's like he's looking from an elevated position down. I just uh, just like how that fell, so I thought I'd cut back in and show you that. But we're going to roll on to his outfit. Moving on to outfit, or in this case, outfits. It comes with a lot. I'm going to show you briefly the second outfit, but when I get round to the extras, he'll be wearing the second outfit. So then I might cover the same ground again. But we'll start off and show you. He's got a sculpted uh, beret this time. Felt covered. Uh, does feel really good. Got to make sure you push it right down on his head, I find. Because I've seen some rather awkward ones looking... Awkward looking ones on pictures and in some videos I've seen already. But I find if you push it right down as far as it goes so there's no there's no more movement that's like straight through the beret onto the top of his head if you can get it like that it looks really natural uh i will say as well mine's got a little bit of felt rub somewhere there it's not a problem it's not really noticeable because the material underneath the felt is black anyway so it pretty much just uh fades in as you see he's got the ski or tactical goggles Got him wearing those, they look really nice and do fit his face excellently. They have obviously been sculpted for this head sculpt. Turning him round, see he's got the earpiece in. It drops down and goes to this sort of... Uh, I thought they're headphones, but I don't think they are. They're more like a voice actuator that wraps round, wraps all the way around the back. You can see there. And then the wiring down the front. So, uh, as you can see, it comes around here, clips on there, and then there's a battery pack that tucks inside there. So that's uh, really nice. His tactical vest is better than the first version. This is now rubberized. The uh, upper chest section does feel really nice, like um, a sponged rubber. 
and then it zips down the front not like the other one that you sort of opened at the top and slid down in this one is just a better step forward underneath that it wears a three quarter length uh, sweat top kind of like the dexter henley one but this one has a zip through front so that again is easy to get on the zips work really nice to see how small they are also see the stitching here that stops the sleeves from constantly rolling down it stays in position and i do like that uh, Hot Toys thinking outside the box. Then around the back, the tactical vest is very similar to the front one. Nice. Moving down to his gun belt or his gun rig. I think this is a massive step forward on the on the first one as well. The first one pretty much just used um, just standard strapping. This one is like uh, plastic, made to look like leather. But because they've done it like that, they can put the fancy looking uh, Expendables belt buckle on and then these small buckles on the leg straps, which wrap all the way around, obviously, and go on to his holster unit, which again is excellently done. As you come round, he's got the revolver's holster, which is nice. Turn it all the way around again, got the uh, holster on that leg. I will say as well, because it is plastic or like a rubberized plastic, it does move nicely so you can spread his legs. Like that's pretty spread and it just moves with him. I really like it. He's got the black uh, combat trousers, which are pretty much the same as the first set. Uh, I wouldn't say they were weathering on, but um, I suppose you could weather them, that not that he'd need it. Uh, but they do feel nice, really good material. Moving down to the sculpted boot, which has sort of a... A shin guard protection that looks like it comes to the side and buckled that is all sculpted but it's really well done and i do like the uh, scale of it the proportions to the rest of the body i just think it looks really good so we'll start him turning you can see he's coming around got him posed up now he's got the uh, assault rifle which is uh, really nice the elasticated strap that goes round and under that arm really nice bit of an action pose for you uh, right, rest of the outfit. It does come with a another black t-shirt, which I don't think I'll be using because you don't need to see it under this. So that'll be staying bagged. Brown cargo trousers, again, really well done. Cut and stitch, excellent as we expect from Hot Toys. Like I say, I've, I'll let you into a little secret. I've actually filmed the extras section where he's wearing this outfit. So this is, I filmed it pretty much category by category, but mixed it up. So I have already filmed a section where he's wearing this. So I know it's coming up on the extras section. The denim waistcoat, again, good cut and stitch. Doesn't uh, button up, just stays loose. Looks nice. And then he's got like an endless style shirt with a pushed up sleeves. And then it's sort of made to look like he's got another striped t-shirt or a couple of layers underneath that he hasn't really all he's got is just the top bits stitched in and it's okay because when you've got that on the sort of bulked three layers goes nicely over his tattoo so you're not going to uh, be rubbing against the body constantly another pair of ankle boots or shoes obviously they're not as high as the ones he's wearing and they're uh, a brown really well weathered Excellent sculpt and again really nice proportions. They're as big as his feet would be if the figure as tall as he is Another sculpted and felted flat cap Again when it's on make sure you push it right down or so it will look awkward You can sort of I like to squeeze it right down onto his head and then just sort of turn it off to an angle So I do like that. It's a good uh, second uh, Second outfit a lot better than the one that come with the first version of Barney Ross, which were pretty much an afterthought the glasses, say, when it gets to the extra section, you'll see him wearing those. Do fit him excellently, and they are really nice. If you're looking to pick up some shades, and they're around about the shape you want, they might go well on your custom figures. And then a nice watch with a brand, leather strap, and a gold face. Got the digits on. Everything. So the outfit is excellent, and the fact that we get two just sort of makes it that little bit better still. So I'm going to give the outfit... I will say as well, the outfit doesn't hinder the articulation, but I'll cover that more. When I get to the articulation, but to, to score the outfit, it is a strong category, and I've given it a five out of five. 